Ponte. Happy Friday! Yeah. Welcome into the Phoenix Sports Podcast, presented by the DraftKings Sportsbook app, America's top red sportsbook app. Don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe wherever you get your podcast, and leave us a five star review. It's me, it's your girl. DJ Mackie. Michaela Burke is in the house, and of course, the one, the only. Shonda Pod. What's poppin'? Hey everyone, how's it What's going? Poppin'? Sorry we're coming to you a little bit late. If you're mad about it, you can yell at the Coyotes team because you, they had to do a, sh- a uh, you, can, you can blame the Coyotes. You can blame the Coyotes and the NHL because they had to just have their trade deadline at the same time that our show was supposed to happen. Um, so it's all their fault. But if you missed the PHNX Coyotes trade deadline show, go check it out. The team did a great job of breaking down everything that happened. At this past trade deadline, and uh, we got a lot to talk. We got a lot. To, we have a lot to talk about to do. get into. First of all, I want to say hi to the fam. Hi, Charles. Hi, Roaring Fork. Hi, Michael. Hi, Daniel. What's up, fam? So good to see all of you. We are so happy that you're here. Um, Roaring Fork asking, did Max survive Nashville? Uh, barely. Uh, yeah, I mean, she did, but she came back. She's got fucking cowboy <laughs> boots on, and is, like she dressed like a cowboy. What like, is your definition of survival? Because um, <laughs> she did it, it, she she did not come back. She left as Mac. She came back as Mac. Mac. Um. Yeah, guys, listen. Nashville was amazing. I made the horrible decision of staying out until the bars closed at three a.m. Getting in my to, Uber, though. grabbing my bags, and then going to the airport and getting on a plane at five a.m. So. It was bad decision making all around, but hey, we're alive. We made it. We're we're here. Yeah, listen. <laughs> I was worried that I might need to need to get a new host, not because anything bad was going to happen to you, but you just might not come back. Um, yeah, I'm glad you're back. Though. She was hanging on by a thread. I was still hung over, so I can't, I flew in. I landed at like 7 a.m. Monday in Denver, and then I came here. And I landed at 12. <laughs> So Monday was like recovery day. I woke up on Tuesday and I was still hungover. <laughs> Jesus. I, and that was with your family. I can't imagine if we're all in Nashville this summer for the NHL draft. Oh, oh my it's God. It's going Because we, we have a vet. Petey knows Broadway like the back of his that's hand. Be my four, that'll be my fourth time in Nashville. I feel like that's a vet. Yeah. Yeah. But you're not going there multiple times a year with an NHL team vet. That's true. That's like, true. He, that's fair. Petey gets into one, can get into one. And we're getting cowboy hats. We're going to. Yeah, turn up. yeah, it's going to be a mess. Style. It's going to be so fun. You guys have to come to Nashville with us for the NHL draft. It's going to be great. Um, <laughs> before we get into all things Kevin Durant, we got to talk about Four Peaks. I consumed <sighs> multiple beers, but none of them were as good as Four Peaks in Nashville, and I'm very sad about it. Are we? We're going to have to check some luggage. On I know. The way to we're going to have to bring Four up. Peaks to Nashville because everywhere I went, I asked and especially when I was a little drunk. <laughs> I was like, you, got four you guys have four you have wow here. Out here. <laughs> um, they did not have wow we in Nashville. Unfortunately, I was very upset about it. And I had to settle for some second rate beer. And I was upset the entire time. And we I might, cried tears. I will I say, back. I know before, like sometimes when certain teams are in the playoffs in different cities, they'll like, they'll send a bunch of beer out there. So the fans have their home beer. We might need to, yeah. Tap in with four, four peaks. Four peaks is going to have to send us, us with some beer to Nashville for the NHL draft because it was horrible drinking anything but four <laughs> peaks in Nash. But if you want to be like us and drink the best beer around, including their two new brews, the Dank IPA, mm. which is my favorite. Um, love that so much. You can also go for their Hazy IPA. You oh, can so pick Dank's up- taken over is your favorite? I don't know. It's a, it's a, it's toss a tough up. one. Yeah. It really depends on the day. Yeah. You can pick up Four Peaks wherever you get your groceries. And don't forget that our friends will be out there for the M3F Festival, March 3rd and 4th, which is today and tomorrow. You can grab your tickets at m3ffest.com and enjoy a wow wheat beer while you're there. You must be 21 years or older to enjoy responsibly. Also got to give a shout out to Mountain Mike's. I don't know if um, Max did this on purpose, but usually pizza is delivered on Mondays. Yes. I obviously wasn't here on Monday. Max so was also wasn't here. Flying back. Okay, so it's a little selfish. We got pizza notice, on but... Tuesday, and it was like my saving grace because I was still hungover, <laughs> and I was able to eat pizza and like sop up all the alcohol in my body on Tuesday. So thank you, Mountain Mikes and Max, for bringing pizza to the office on Tuesday. Is pizza not like the perfect? Because like I can't think of a food that I ever want more when I'm sober, drunk, and hungover. It's the perfect like, food all of those situations, all, yeah. pizza is the perfect answer. It's elite. So, especially Mountain Mike's Pizza out of all yes. of them. Um, make sure to check out their locations in Mesa Chandler or Tucson. You can head over to mountainmikespizza.com to place your next order. And don't forget that our diehards get a $50 voucher upon signing up. 
And tap into PHNX underscore D-backs, or, well, PHNX D-backs on YouTube um, later today. They give away a pizza once a week. They so, do give pizza away. And you can get some pizza. mountain mics for free. Free pizza. Um, all right. Let's get into our first segment and our only segment because it's the only segment we need. It's time to do a temperature check. Hi. Good God Almighty, Kevin Durant, it's a Venus son. And it's official. He played his first game on Wednesday. <laughs> And I cried. I <laughs> sobbed like a child seeing Kevin Durant in a Phoenix Suns uniform. Yeah, there were there were a couple moments where I just I, I walked out here where everyone was sitting watching the game in our comfy more furniture recliners, and I would just look at the screen and I would see Kevin Durant in a Suns uniform, and I had to pinch myself. It was yeah. surreal. I, I honestly still can't believe it. Uh, never in my life would I imagine seeing Easy Money Sniper in a freaking Phoenix Suns Durant uniform. Right. Like, I don't know what I did to deserve this, but thank you, basketball gods. I will never stop thanking you for <laughs> the treasure that is watching Kevin Durant in <laughs> purple and orange. It's, it's about you. It's what you did to deserve yeah. this. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, it sure um, is. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know. What, like, yeah, I don't know what I did to deserve it either. Um, but it is it obviously like on, from a basketball standpoint, it's amazing. But just for what it, I feel like it means for the city and for Valley Sports, yeah. it is unbelievable. Um, I. Kevin Durant's a Phoenix Sun, man. I, know. Like, I, I feel like I can't say it enough. Yeah. It's it's one of those things where I'm just I don't know if I'll ever fully accept it. Yeah. Like watching him warm up in the Suns like warm up yeah. clothes, I was like, oh my God, like this it's is happening. actually it's happening. happening. Like <laughs> our hopes and dreams have come true. But um and then after he took his warm ups off and like he went out on the court in the uniform and he like made that first bucket, I was just sitting there like, oh my God, I couldn't believe it. Like, I still can't believe it sometimes. Like it genuinely, like, I don't think I've ever had a reaction like that before. Like such like a visceral, like, holy shit moment. Like I still, like it hasn't sat with me. I don't think. No, (laughs) I, I, I can only think back to the, like, there's like, there's moments in sports where I can think back to it. I'm like, oh my God. I think of, I don't, this is really random, but I think of like Zion Williamson's NBA debut where the, he dropped like 22 points and I was sitting in it. I was like, oh, we are, we are, I am witnessing something different. Like I am witnessing something special. Um, and that's how I felt when I was watching Kevin Durant play for the Suns. And it's, I mean, he had a, lim, a minutes restriction. It wasn't yeah. like he dropped 80, but it, it just his presence. I was just like, oh, my, this is, this is a new day where we are witnessing something special. It's a new dawn. It's a new day. It's a new life. Didn't it? Yeah, it was so sick. Um, You did mention he was on a minutes restriction, so we didn't see as much of Kevin Durant um, as we could have if he weren't. But, of course, he's coming back from that knee injury, so they want to make sure that he comes back carefully and doesn't re-injure himself or re-aggravate that injury. Um, But even though he was on that minutes restriction, like he still delivered. So he Mm -hmm. dropped 23 points, six rebounds, two assists, and two blocks, by the way, in 27 27 minutes, just 27 minutes. He had a plus 13 uh, while he was on the court, which is... (laughs) Yeah, and that, that 10 for 15 shooting, like it's this is why KD is the player he is, the efficiency. Yeah, um, absolutely. And that, that shows you once he gets more minutes, he's, he's he's gonna get more points. I'm <laughs> so ready for more KD minutes, by the way, but I don't want it to be rushed and I want to make sure that he doesn't yeah. get hurt anymore. So Jeez. I will take the small doses, whatever I can get of watching KD play for the Phoenix Suns. But um, it was just so cool to see. I think one of the things that I was the most worried about when this happened is just like how it's going to affect the team chemistry. Yeah. Obviously, the team had such a great thing going with Mikhail and Cam. They had been together for a long time, so they had a long time to build up such a rapport. I mean, you'd seen it all over the internet, like the way this team interacted with each other, whether it was like jamming out during warmups to um, NBA Young Boy or like whatever it was, like they had yeah. such a good relationship. And so, you know, when you take two of those big pieces out and then you add a superstar into the mix mm-hmm. like i think there's always going to be questions about team chemistry and like how they're going to get along how they're going to play together how kd's going to fit into the playbook um and it, it kind of like took away some of those concerns like uh, watching them play together like it didn't really seem like there was like a major outlier out there on the court like they yeah. they played together well in my opinion yeah and i mean it this wasn't it's not trading for Kyrie, for example like it Right, it's a guy that you know. He had a relationship with D Book before, right. and and all this kind of stuff, and it is a relatively low key guy. So I wasn't like I didn't think he was going to come in here and burn this to the ground. But it is right. still, regardless, whenever there's change, you, there's always questions about how it's going to affect the team. Um, but like I said, it I think you saw 
the best that you could have hoped for. It yes. was it was them vibing, and I and I think and I feel like that's something they've mentioned on the PHNX Sun show before. But KD and D Book are are very similar in a lot of ways. I mm-hmm. feel like they are. Obviously, KD is known for his, some of his Twitter antics, but otherwise, he's like a relatively a pretty low key person. Like you don't know a whole lot of, about his personal life. Yeah. Like he really just wants to play basketball. Yeah, he's um, very mellow. Yeah. like not very outspoken, exactly. very and chill. KD had a quote um, with Vinny Goodwill, uh, Vince Goodwill of Yahoo Sports yesterday, talking about how like people asked about his leadership. Like that's not his job. Mm-hmm. Monty's job is to is to lead the team. James Jones' job is to put, is to choose the players, build the roster. His job is to play basketball, and I feel like that's very similar to Book's approach. Um, and it, it'll be good for for younger guys like a DA, who you know people talk about his personality, all that kind of stuff. Like you know, you have two guys here who are just here to play basketball and to yeah. win and to get better. And I feel like it's going to be good not just for their, those two, but for the whole team. Yeah, I think out of all the superstars that you possibly could have brought to this team, Kevin Durant is pretty much the best option because you don't have someone that has like a a controversy attached to them or is very loud and outspoken and dramatic and is all about me show like or a guy like lebron who wants to have control over over everything right correct so i think out of all the superstars you could have possibly brought to phoenix kevin durant was definitely the best option because like you mentioned of his low key laid back he's very similar to d book in that way which i love i love that they're just like put up or shut up let's just go play basketball um the whole team for for the most part is kind of like that which is yeah. just another reason I, why the suns are so endearing and why i'm obsessed with them uh because they just aren't offensive and that sounds so yeah. dumb and so basic no, but, but like and it's not even like <laughs> obviously people think offensive and they think of like Kyrie, for example, which it's right. great that he's not that. But also just like in the sense that it's not Luca who's like crying over things all the time. Or like I said, it's not LeBron who is always who he's always going to be bigger than the team he's on. Yeah. Um, KD is, is perfect, perfect for this team. I think perfect for the city in a lot of ways. Mm-hmm. Um and I honestly, like outside of D book and and Kevin Durant, I can't think maybe like Giannis, honestly, but I can't think of two guys yeah. who would you could drop them on just about any team. And honestly, they're probably just going to want a ball. Yeah. Um, I, like I said, I think it's perfect for so many different reasons. Yeah, absolutely. I definitely agree. One of the reasons, too, I think it's perfect. And the chat kind of beat me to yes. it. But um, Connor in the chat saying Katie made it so easy for book to cook. Jose is saying Booker played for 33 minutes and dropped 37 points and two blocks also. I think that was my other favorite part yeah. about watching them on the court together is like you've seen it time and time again, like Devin Booker being double teamed on defense or, you know, the entire like plan is just to shut down Devin Booker. And so um, it it makes it harder for Book to cook. <laughs> and, um, you know, with Kevin Durant on the floor, like you can't do what you were doing in the past when you were playing the Phoenix Suns and focusing your efforts on guarding Devin Booker. Like you have KD on the other end now. So like you have to completely figure out how to guard both of them in a more efficient way and so that takes a lot of pressure off of book and like book can do what book is meant to do now um especially against like really good teams and so just to see um some of that I don't, like i don't know if pressure is the right word or like yeah you know what i'm trying to say yeah, like, 100%. like just the, to the, see just that relief off of yeah. him and he can just like do what he's meant to do and not have to worry about three freaking defenders trying to shut it down in the paint like it was just so cool to see because um like the game plan i feel like coming into it when you're playing against the phoenix suns is find a way to shut down devin booker yeah now it has to be find a way to shut down kevin right yeah 100 percent. it's a rising tide lifts all ships if you can only focus there's there's five it's a five on five game if you're yeah. putting two guys on the best player well now that's kevin durant and that leaves somebody open like everyone is going to benefit from something like this um it is, it is like yeah. It, it I, I think K. Obviously, we saw Devin Booker is going to thrive, and I think it, Kevin Durant. He is, in my opinion, a top three scorer in the history of the game. Um, and so he's gonna get his, but he's not. I, I feel like he's not Kobe Bryant or or Michael Jordan in the sense that he, he's. I think he's more like LeBron in the sense that he. He he will get his, but he doesn't necessarily like need his. Like yeah. he wants to win, and he will be happy if his if his if teammates winning, yeah. thrive. Mm-hmm. Um, because like I said, he's coming around. He's gonna get his. He's gonna get his twenty five thirty every night, probably regardless of what happens. Mm-hmm. Um, but there's no reason that Devin Booker can't also get twenty five thirty every night. No reason that DeAndre Ayton can't drop twenty here and there, and with his sixteen rebounds or something like that. So yeah, like, everybody's gonna benefit. Um, and that's that's what happens when you get one of the best players and. The history of the game. Yeah, absolutely. Um, do you have any lingering concerns? I know we've only seen one game with limited minute restrictions. 
do you have any concerns about this team and the potential that they have for the rest of the season? No, I think obviously a lot of people want to look at the bench for a concern. Yeah, um, but I was going to say. Um, EJ yesterday on the Outside Shots podcast with Saul had talked about this, about how he doesn't have any concerns about the bench. I mean, you look at guys yeah. like TJ Warren. We saw he dropped 50 in the yeah. bubble. Like, you know he's capable if he gets the mm-hmm. opportunity to score. And, I mean, EJ went as far as to say that he's going to win the Suns a playoff game at this point. Check that podcast out. It's, it's amazing listening to EJ talk. But, um, um I, I, the bench is an obvious concern. Uh, I am not that concerned about it. I think they will be okay. Yeah. For me, the only concern, and I hate saying this, is Kevin Durant is not young, mm-hmm. and he has had injuries before, and yeah. one injury to Kevin Durant, and all of this is blown up. Yeah. That's the reality of it. Um, because now you would be in a situation where you don't really have depth, and you also don't have a top five player in the league. Right. Um, so that that really is my concern. But as far as if Kevin Durant's healthy, I, I'm i not worried. Um, yeah. I, I think they are the best team in basketball if that's the situation. So as long as he's healthy, and, and obviously as long as Book's healthy, DA is healthy, all of that. Like as long as his team is healthy, yeah. I I don't I don't have concerns. Personally. Yeah, I agree too. I would say um, the bench was probably my biggest concern, but then you see like a game what they had against OKC, yep. and the bench came up huge for the Suns in that game, um, and that kind of also just like put out the fire of my concerns about the bench a little bit more. So um, I'm not as concerned about them as I yeah. was, but. I don't know. Whoever is superstitious, like whatever higher power you pray to, like start praying, put some silver spoons under your pillow, some garlic at your front door, (laughs) your pajamas on backwards. Like whatever. Trying to get a snow day. What are we? (laughs) Whatever you do, like start doing it and pray to the Lord, the basketball gods that nobody on this team gets hurt because we cannot afford it at this point. Like you mentioned, if Katie gets hurt or like, I don't even want to talk about it because I don't want to speak into existence. But like. (laughs) we're screwed at that point. So, and that's, I think I genuinely think the only thing standing in the sun's way now is the Denver nuggets kind of and injuries. So as long as no one gets hurt, I swear people start wearing your pajamas backwards to bed or something. Just like, please, for the love of God, I don't think anything can really stand in the way of this team barring themselves injuries and possibly Denver nuggets. So. Um, I'm assuming you had snow days in Colorado growing up. Yes, many. Did, so, what did you have? Were those like your traditions? The, yeah. the spoon and the yes. Yeah, so you yeah. put a silver spoon under your be- yep. your pillow when you go to sleep, and then you pajamas turn your pajamas inside out. inside out and backwards, yes. and you sleep with your pajamas inside out and backwards. We're now. saying this to a bunch of Arizona people who probably yeah. have no idea what we're <laughs> no, talking about. What's a snow, snow day? day. <laughs> um, I also raised comment. Don't know about that. If Ja doesn't get arrested, I think he could take out the Suns. Um, we're talking about basketball, not a fist fight. We're a gun duel. Um, I'm not. I think we're good in the West. Do people still duel? No, but no. I'm saying this motherfucker likes to play with guns, apparently. Um, um, Steven's saying both Katie and Book look so happy. They did. It they was did. so cute to yeah. see. Oh, my gosh. Um, <laughs> the joy was infectious. Was I was I was smiling the whole game. I was sitting there gritting like a dummy, just like watching the TV like, oh, my God, I can't believe this is happening. It was surreal. <laughs> it was really surreal. Um, so the Suns, they play the Bulls tonight. Obviously, we're going to assume that's dub. Uh, the Bulls have been struggling all year. I believe the Bulls are only Four and a half point underdogs, though, which is Ooh, wild to me. That's weird. Um, KD will most likely be on minute restrictions again. What do you want to see tonight in their game against Chicago? Uh, just more of the efficiency. Uh, obviously, you don't know how much he's going to be playing, but I just it's exactly what you saw in that last game. He yeah. went 10 for 15 from the field. If he if he's shooting like that and the other guys are getting theirs, like if you get another 36 point, 37 point night from Devin Booker, like. That's all I want to see is just them continue to build that chemistry because as great as a player he is, they did only have one game. Like it is going to take time. Um, oh, I also would, I would love. I mean, if he wants to fight Patrick Beverly, I'll take that too. Like I'll oh take my it. Gosh, a saucy yeah, off Ray Motion saying Patrick Beverly suiting up for the Bulls. My God, I don't think I've ever hated a player in the NBA as much as I hate Patrick Beverly. I will say though. A guy like Patrick Beverly could be very galvanizing for a team like this because he fucks around with the Suns and KD needs to do something about it. That's a good way to put yourself in good, the good graces of the rest of your team. Ugh. So if you show up and you're you're you're, you're standing up for your teammates off rip. I so, hate Patrick Beverly. Yeah, I, I, so Patrick much. Beverly annoys me a little bit, but um, yeah, no. The getting back to KD, I just want to see him obviously stay healthy, stay safe, um, and just keep playing the efficient basketball that he played last game. Um, that's all you can really ask for a guy if like Patrick that. Beverly puts even so much breathes wrong at any of my son's players i'm going out there i will fly out to chicago and i will like we're fighting we're brawling at that point like keep your nasty mitts off of my phoenix Suns players i don't want to see you shoving anyone from behind i don't want to see you tripping anyone on purpose like patrick beverly you're on notice like do not touch yeah. any of my phoenix Suns. i swear this, to god i will say this is the these are these are the times where you miss guys like jay crowder 
That's the kind of guy that might punch somebody in the face if he needs to. Um, but yeah, I if he if he could just relax and stay calm, we should have a good game tonight. Um, Connor also making a good point. Da is going to benefit so exactly. much from this. He now doesn't have to have the pressure on his shoulders of having to be that number two guy. I, to, yes, I was going to bring that up. Um, to me, it's very much like, a, and I do not want to compare these two players as far as talent because I do think, and just let me finish, Mac, because you're not going to like this. Oh, no. But Kendrick Perkins, oh, when no. he played for the Boston Celtics, part, one of the things that he said is that he like he could try to be the number one guy or he could play his role on this team. And I think it gives D.A. a chance to find a clear role on this team that doesn't require him to be the best player on any given night, um, especially when, when D-Book was hurt. Um, he can be the third or even the fourth most impactful player on this team and still get his. Um, I think the situation could be great for D.A., 100%. Yeah, I absolutely agree. Um, I think it's just a great thing all around. Yeah. Obviously, that's why they did it, why they leveraged their future of trading McHale and Cam to bring someone like Katie in because they saw all of those potentials and they thought that they were deliverable and they're like, you know what? Let's do it. Um, we are celebrating here and we will be yeah, we celebrating are. for many, many times, many, many weeks to come um, about Kevin Durant being a Phoenix Sun. And you can celebrate, too, by picking up our brand new shirts. We have two of them. Yeah. Uh, we've got the KD uh, Slim Valley <laughs> Slim Valley Sniper. Slim Valley Reaper shirt. Reaper, that's right. And then we also have our brand new um, mid-range Assassins shirt, which is honestly my favorite shirt that we've ever made. I've already ordered two of them because yeah. I want to make sure one is always clean while the other one's in the wash so I can wear it multiple days a week. <laughs> I, I, that's so extra, but I respect that a lot. Um, <laughs> it's genuinely the most beautiful shirt I've ever seen in my life. Um, it's like the details on it are just incredible like i you just have to check it out mm -hmm. you have to just go over to the phnx locker and look at it and just admire the beauty um if you buy both of the assassins and the um Sun valley reaper shirt you get an exclusive sticker pack that you cannot purchase anywhere else um so it's a heck of a deal head on over to phnxlocker.com and pick up some of those sweet shirts do it and uh, anything else you want to say about kd before we move on He's really good at basketball. He's really good at what you basketball. Got, Suns fans. <laughs> um, Connor saying Pat Bev talks a lot of trash for someone who only scores seven points a game. It's true. He does. He talks a lot of crap and he can't back it up with however he decides to not produce on the court. Um, <laughs> Steven87 saying most important to keep all the guys healthy for Dallas. Yeah, that's probably going to be a big game. Um, it's going to be interesting to see how the Suns stack up against Dallas for the first Kyrie. time this season with KD on the roster and going against Kyrie. Um, it's going to be a blockbuster of a game, I feel like. Kyrie and Luka went unconscious Crazy, the other night yeah <laughs> um so Crazy. that should be one hell of a game especially if if um katie's playing full minutes at that point yeah absolutely um DraftKings, sean win any money lately um i have not <laughs> lately but i plan on winning some money tonight on the new look arizona coyotes um and by and i'm not betting on them i'm betting on carol vamelka saves because i think they're gonna get lit up yeah they're gonna, gonna get to lit up a bunch of saves um so I'm looking forward to that. Also, play some futures. I was hosting PHNX Bets every Monday through Friday at noon all week today or all week this week. Um, we talked NHL futures. So I'm looking. I'm 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 investing. I'm looking at making money in the future once the um, Atlantic Division eventually inevitably wins the Stanley Cup. And no, I'm not talking about the Sabres. I'm talking about the Bruins or the Tampa Bay Lightning. You asked me a question, I answered. Were you expecting me to say more? <laughs> no. I was just trying to process all of the things you said about hockey. Um, I was like trying to keep up. I was like, There's a lot going I on. My butts on that? Um, um, <laughs> I don't think the Avs are going to win the Stanley Cup, if you want to hear hey, that. Hey, hey, we're not talking about that. <laughs> you're not speaking that into existence. Jack Johnson, either. your savior or something? Um, all right. Let's just not worry about the Avs. <laughs> <laughs> Regardless. Of who you want to bet on, whether it's the Avs or the Coyotes, you can do it on the DraftKings Sportsbook app. You sure can. Make sure to download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now. Use promo code PHNX. New customers can bet just $5 and get $200 in bonus bets instantly. It's a lot of bonus bets. Um, only at the DraftKings Sportsbook app with promo code PHNX. Minimum age and eligibility restrictions apply. See our show notes for details. Um, before we move on to NHL trade deadline, Muhammad in the comments said it was a mistake to trade McHale. Now we don't have any defense. Giannis will stomp us in a finals matchup. I don't necessarily think I agree. I think obviously our defense isn't at the same level that it was at. But one thing that I loved about what I think I love about KD is his defense can like seamlessly flow into his mm -hmm. offense. And I think you saw a little bit of that in his first game. He had those blocks and then he went and he like no look past debug yeah. and he debug dunked it. So like, I feel like 
Um, obviously, you're not going to get the same type of defensive production as you would have if you have McHale on your roster. But I don't think it's as drastic of a hit, if that makes yeah. sense. And also, I love McHale. There's not a player in this NBA in this league that can stop Giannis Antetokounmpo. You yeah. can hope to slow him down, but you are not stopping him. So um, the reality is, is 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 trying. I I think trying to stop Giannis is not the way you need to try and beat a Bucks team because, like I said, you're not doing it. Um, yeah, you can limit them trying to shoot threes, obviously stuff like that. But um, I, I'm not worried about that. And like you said, KD is a, is an amazing a defender. Yeah. Um, so like really uh, I, good. <laughs> it, it there, there's very few people in this league who are physically strong enough to stop the freak that is Giannis, yeah. Giannis Antetokounmpo. But I do think he is a, a, a which is KD not a is, knock on anyone. No, Giannis Antetokounmpo is one of the, is is one of the biggest athletic freaks I have ever seen in sports. Yeah. He is it's absurd. If he could shoot threes, he'd be the greatest player of all time. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> I, I don't know if you're stopping him, but KD is going to give you an opportunity, a good opportunity to slow him down. Yeah, absolutely. And I think also, to be fair, if you're concerned about Giannis, you also have to be concerned about Nikola Jokic because a lot of the things that Nikola can do are a little scary. You're not you don't you don't agree. I, I, I don't believe in the Nuggets at all. I think they're frauds. And I don't think Jokic, Jokic is a great regular season player, but do something <laughs> in the playoffs. Like you, you literally do something in the playoffs. Your second best player is Jamal Murray. We have, not we have a great clip for that, too. What EJ went on a rant about this? Yeah, yesterday I, I am anti Nikola Jokic. He should not be the MVP in my opinion. Um, but that's neither here nor there. Yeah, um, and we'll also Nikola Jokic is a great passer and all of that stuff. But there is something to be said for a guy who can physically take over a game. And Jokic is not that athletically. He is not going to decide this is my game now. I am going to drop eighty on your head um, in a way that Giannis can. Um, Jokic is a great player. Don't get me wrong, but he's not Giannis Antetokounmpo. All right, we're going to have to save that debate for another day. Um, <laughs> Bear Down Cats saying the last thing we need is Pat Bev to do his yes. usual dirty shit. A hundred percent agree. I really wish we somehow That's catch Crowder. Saying. I think that's a fair assessment because if you had anyone on this roster that was going to like go out there and like get down to dirty and like, yeah, like take if there it was, to somebody you. Somebody needs to get in a fifth fight at center court. It was Jay Crowder. <laughs> it was Jay Crowder. Um, and we don't have anyone like that on the roster anymore. So that was definitely the upside that Jay Crowder had, which is a huge reason why they brought him to Phoenix in the first place because they I needed someone say, like that. I don't think people really, really know KD or his, his medal. I, KD is not a guy that I want to fuck with, like at all. He's from the DMV. Like I'm not. I really don't want to smoke with that man. He's not. He's not. He's obviously so valuable that he's not going to be out here fighting motherfuckers like Jay Crowder might. But yeah. Um. But uh, KD is not going to get walked all over. And neither is Devin Booker. Like I know Devin Booker's low key and all that, but I, 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 I Jay Crowder was a different kind of enforcer. But I don't feel like this team is just going to get pushed around. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. Yeah, I also agree. Um, I'm just worried about Patrick Beverly, but I'll never not worry about Patrick Beverly because Patrick Beverly only cares about himself. So it is what it is. It is what it is. Um, all right, let's talk about the NHL trade deadline because it just happened. Uh, it passed about two-ish hours ago. And um, I don't know who's playing for the Coyotes anymore. <laughs> I don't think the Coyotes know. They literally. Yeah, I don't they, think the Coyotes know who's playing. They for the broke Coyotes it down anymore. on Coyotes earlier. They literally don't like. They might not have enough players. Yeah. I don't know what they're supposed to do. <laughs> um. So just to recap, there were a lot of moves made. Um. Nick Ritchie and Troy Stetcher both went to Calgary for Nick Ritchie's brother, which is the Brett first Ritchie. time yeah. brother for butter, brother, brother, brother for, for brother. brother, brother for brother, brother has brother happened in the NHL. Um. Nick Bugstad went to Edmonton. Shane Goshespair went to Carolina, who, by the way, they played tonight. Um, Shane's just going to have to, like, grab his gear from the Coyotes locker room yeah, and walk down it was the hallway. pretty nice because I don't, and I'm, don't think he went on the trip with the team to Dallas. So he yeah. kind of, after their last game um, on Tuesday, I think it was, they kind of just got to stay here and wait for his new team to show up. Yeah, <laughs> so he's just going to grab his stuff out of the uh, locker room and mullet and just walk, walk down the hall the and hall. Uh, head into the Carolina's locker room. And then obviously the biggest trade of the trade deadline for the Coyotes specifically was Jacob Chikrin, who got traded to the Ottawa Senators for a 2023 first round pick, a 2024 second and a 2026 second. Um, we were all kind of waiting on bated breath to see what would happen with Jacob mm -hmm. Chikrin. It wasn't a secret to literally anyone who follows hockey that Jacob wanted out of Arizona. Um, so it finally happened. The reaction was actually extremely negative. Yeah, it was. <laughs> um, people on Twitter were not happy about the return for Jacob Chikrin that the Coyotes received. I think a lot of us were expecting maybe two first round picks and a prospect, um, I think the no prospects part probably hurt a lot to yeah. some people because 
the Coyotes don't have anyone to play for them. Um, and I think, you know, just listening to interviews with Bill Armstrong and following this team, you were kind of, I mean, I got my hopes up, I think, a little bit more for expecting more of a return from Jacob. Yeah, I mean, I think... I think people started hearing the name Matt Nyes get thrown around in Toronto, and that was never going to happen. But I think people started hearing that, and they got their hopes up a little bit. Yeah. I think this is a solid return for a player who made it pretty clear he did not want to play here. Um, I, and also, also, like this is what Bill's plan was all along. He wants draft picks. If you, you get a prospect that you feel good about, sure. But that was not like pro- – picks were the plan. Yeah. Um, and and – yeah, I, I just don't. I, I think people were just being a little unrealistic. They got a first round pick, and that's what that's really what the basis was from the get. So I understand the disappointment. You when you, when you get have a guy that is this talented, you want to get a lot more. But the reality is, a lot of defensemen were already get, already moved, so the the spots that he could have gone to were limited, mm-hmm. which lowers the price. Yeah, um, and you, you needed to get rid of a man. So I, I think you got what you could yeah. and I I understand the disappointment but I'm I'm fine with the return yeah um I don't think a lot of people who don't closely follow this team also realize that the Coyotes kind of had their back up against a wall in a mm-hmm. way with how they were constrained money wise yeah um this team is doing everything they can to meet the salary floor minimum yeah um so let's just <laughs> Yeah, and then put that into perspective yeah. like they needed to meet the salary floor minimum and then there's the other side of it where they are are limited financially, so they can only retain so much money in yeah, contracts. Yeah, the retaining so, of the contracts was the issue. Yeah, I mean, Craig breaks this down a lot in an article he wrote, and and um, they talked about it on on Coyotes. But Bill Armstrong's hands, he, he in a lot of ways had a hand tied behind his back. So, um, and Roaring Front makes a good point that the pick could be a top ten pick. Yeah. At, at a point, um, we are either rooting for the the Ottawa Senators to basically lose every game or to make it to the conference finals. Um, either or. We'll so take either. <laughs> it's, it's, it's an interesting position to be in, but I'm honestly just glad that Chickren is gone. Me too. And we now know, like, it, it's, we've cleared that. Yeah, absolutely. And now we know where, where, where the team is. Yeah, I'm glad he's gone as well. Um, Obviously, it didn't go the way that I was hoping it would with Chickren. I was hoping that Chickren would have a little bit more of, like, a Clayton Keller trajectory and yeah. really want to buy into lifer. the team yeah. and be a part, like, a keystone part of this future that the Coyotes are building towards. Um, and it quickly became apparent that that's not what Chikrin wanted. He wants to win now, which <laughs> I'll have fun with Ottawa Senators. Yeah. Um, but it was just disappointing. Like I was honestly like disappointed by Chikrin because I thought, you know, he was going to be the next one to wear a C on his chest at one, at yeah, one point, 100%. way before all of this happened, obviously, um, that quickly was, became apparent. He wore the A last year. But I was anticipating Chikrin to be the next captain for this team, um, at one point and it quickly, quickly went downhill. Um, and I'm just disappointed. I'm just disappointed. Like I just wish that he would have taken more of like a Clayton Keller approach to wanting to be a part of this team and the future that it's building towards and all of the great things that are on the horizon for it. And when it became very obvious that that was not his intention and he kind of became outspoken about how badly he wanted to leave, like I was like a little rubbed the wrong way, I yeah. think. So I'm glad that he's gone. I hope he's happy in Ottawa. His family has a cabin there, as all Canadians yeah. seem to have there. Um, <laughs> so it probably made sense for him family-wise, but I don't know. I'm just glad that he's gone and we don't have to worry about it and talk about it anymore. Yeah, and, and- and to be fair to Jacob Pickard, you know, I, I think when he got here, the plans for this team were a little different. Yeah, um, definitely. And he, he, he's been playing for a long, he's young, but he's been playing for a long time. He started yeah. playing when he was 18. Mm-hmm. Um, so I can understand that all this losing is probably pretty tough. And and they, athletes' greatness gets measured by rings in a, in a lot of ways, a lot of times. Um, so I, 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 and it's similar to my attitude with Kevin Durant because I was never I was never a person that cr- crucified him for going to the Warriors. Mm-hmm. I'm never going to judge an athlete for trying to put themselves in a position to win. Yeah, um, that's what athletes are meant to do. They want to win. Yeah, and Ottawa might not be that right now, but they are in a, they are closer than the Coyotes, and yeah, they absolutely. are they are trending in the right direction. Um, and there's a, ch- there's a good chance they make the playoffs this year. They're they're in, right in the mix in the Eastern Conference for the wild card spot. So, um, like you said, I I wish them all the best. Obviously, everyone wishes it would have gone differently, but I, I I hope he's successful up there until. Up until they meet the the Kairos in the finals, then I hope he fails horribly. <laughs> um, yes, that's a fair assessment. So I know that the trade deadline just passed, and you might not have had a lot of time to digest everything that happened. But what is your initial like grade for how the Coyotes did? What are your just like overall thoughts? Wrap it up. Um, I don't know about grade, but overall they did, they accomplished what they wanted to and they needed to accomplish. They got rid of their upcoming unrestricted free agents. All, they, got, they got rid of 
all of yep. their unrestricted free agents. That's like unheard of. Yeah, and they, they moved people that you weren't sure, like Nick Ritchie, for example. You weren't sure if he was going to get moved because obviously I think coming into the season, people viewed him as a uh, candidate for at the trade deadline, but he hasn't been amazing lately. And so it was a question about whether or not he was going to get moved. Um, but it was a W. They 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 got off of, they, they were able to move players and get picks. That was the goal. The team yeah. is bad now. It's really, really bad now. So they're in, they're right back in the race for the tank. That was always the goal. Yeah. Um, specifically, the Shane Goss' spare bear trade. They flipped a guy that they got for free. They mm-hmm. they got draft picks to take. Yeah. For another draft pick. Yeah. So um, I obviously I understand some of the disappointment that some fans have expressed, but ultimately I think they made good moves. They got rid of the players they were supposed to get rid of, and now they have set themselves up to be successful in the NHL draft for the for years to come. Yeah. Um, and that's all you can ask for. It's a part of a rebuild. It takes a while and it's not fun. But as as PD said on Coyotes, I think this is the worst of it. We yeah. are at the pit of dis- we are at the bottom you're of the pit of despair. Bo- <laughs> you're now, in the it's, pit of despair. now it's time to climb out. We're, it's only it's yeah. literally only up for here from here. We've hit bedrock. Yeah, absolutely. I definitely agree. I think this is as bad as it's ever going to get. I think, um, you know, if I'm to look at it and give it a grade, I would probably do somewhere in the B range. Um, I think Bill Armstrong did the absolute best that he could with the constraints that he had and all of the very difficult aspects of where the Coyotes are as a team that he had to try to navigate around. Um, you know, when the Coyotes first brought Bill Armstrong here from St. Louis to be their next general general manager, I was jazzed about the hire Mm -hmm. because he did crazy things for the blues um, like drafting Tage Thompson and now that and he was gonna do hopefully the same thing for the Coyotes like I have so much faith in Bill Armstrong almost as much faith as I have yeah. in Mike Hazen which is saying yeah. a lot because I think Mike <laughs> Hazen is the best general manager in the valley so um, you know I Ooh. really believe in Bill Armstrong's decision making and the future that he has planned for this team and why he does what he does and so looking at all the decisions that were made as a whole i think he did the absolute best he could with the very difficult place that this team is in and all the constraints he was up against specifically the money constraints um so all in all i think he did like i said the best he could and i probably put it in the b range obviously it would have been great to get a little bit more for chicken but um like you said the places that he could have gone were limited because not that many teams are in, a, in the market for a defenseman so I'm really glad that they did what they did. And um, you kind of mentioned it. They have picks for so days. many draft picks. I like I don't I don't think I've ever seen something like this. We have a, a graph um, or like a chart of how many draft picks the, this team has. Uh, Jacob, if you want to. Oh, do we not have it? That's okay. I, no worries. No stress. Um, it's a lot. I'll just say that. Well, um, uh, Jacob, can get it up. I did send it. So it's in there. I, I want to before we get there, I need to address the Mike Hazen is the best GM in the, in the Valley comment. Not sure if I agree with you. We just forgetting James Jones exists. Like James Jones did just get Kevin Durant, Kevin Durant. the Phoenix Suns. Oh yeah, I kind of just glazed over. And that. also, Bill, <laughs> I think I mean I, feel that I like I, I am biased to Bill. The D backs are like they won seventy four games last year. I love Hazen. I do. <laughs> Listen, Monty Austin for the only unknown. Otherwise, I think this the Valley has tremendous GMs. Yeah, it's they like, do have really good to GMs. Um, okay, okay, okay. That's fair. I did kind of just. Somehow forget that James Jones existed. But, <laughs> but honestly, it is, it, Bill Armstrong's amazing. With these picks, I think I could hit somewhere. Like, you, you have so many. How can you miss? It's a broad side of a barn. How can you miss? And there are so many shots you could take. Look at this. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven picks in 2023. Eleven. And two of them are first rounders. And like, Bill, Bill showed in the last draft that obviously you're going to get a good pick early in the draft, but you also can use these picks to move up. And get better picks. You could package picks. You could take on uh, on contracts like Zach Cassian to get picks. So Bill like, Armstrong, this magician. shit's wild. It, it is incre- It's unbelievable. I don't think I genuinely don't think I've ever seen anything like this. Like I know, like when you're rebuilding, you have a lot of draft picks to work with, but that's so many draft picks. They're what like, I refer to as the Bill Ding Blocks the for the future. Um, <laughs> but uh, but yeah, I mean, this is this is this is how you rebuild. You get you get assets, you get yeah. picks, you get prospects. Also, outside of the picks, I wanted to shout out um, one of the guys that they traded for, other than Brett Ritchie, Nick Ritchie's brother, um, Michael Kesterling, a uh, young defenseman from Calgary, I believe, who the fa- Cal- Calgary fans appear to be sad to have left. So they got another young guy who might be a solid piece of the team. You never know. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the picks are... It, Connor said Connor, it. It, yeah, is, OKC. it is OKC of <laughs> hockey. It is the anti Los Angeles Rams where they said, fuck them picks. They said, fuck, <laughs> comma, the picks, man. Like it, it is. It is 
Obviously, they have to make the picks, and the players have to yeah. develop. But and like we said, you have an arsenal. You're trying Wait. to hit a broadside. Like, how can you, you make miss? your job a lot easier when you get this many chances? For if sure, two, one third of those picks hit. That's crazy. Like, that'll be so good for this team. Um, and, and something. Go ahead. They could always get more. Like, they're gonna yeah. Nick Schmaltz, a possible trade candidate Laughing, at the draft. Asking, would you be mad if Schmaltz was traded? No. No. I mean, <laughs> at Craig, this point, like <laughs> Craig broke it down. The reality is, when this team is good, he'll be like thirty years old. Yeah. Is is he really a piece for the future? His value is probably not higher than it will. It, his pro- value I think now the only is probably will never be Keller. higher. Clayton Keller, and then obviously like Dylan Gunther. Yeah. Obviously, oh, he yeah, hasn't the, been here yet. Cooley. Yes. I, I don't. I don't think guys like lost. Anyone Cross that's actively on the roster right now that I would not want to touch is Clayton Keller because I think. Yeah, uh, Barrett Hayton and Matias Pacelli, I don't want to see. Go yeah, anywhere that's either. true. Um, um, but yeah, otherwise, I feel you. So, no, I would not be mad if Nick Schmaltz was traded. Um, he almost was traded. Um, there were two teams that were really interested in him, mm. but the salary constraints made it very difficult yeah. for the Suns or <laughs> the Suns, the Coyotes. I saw the Suns thing in the corner and I was just like, Suns <laughs> um, made it difficult for the Coyotes. So, I would not be mad. Um, I just think, like, like the Coyotes, like we, we, I know like some Coyotes fans were upset just because it's hard to be a fan of this team, get emotionally invested into these players, want the best for them, love their personality, like really care about these mm-hmm. players and then see them gone. So I definitely feel for Coyotes fans in that way. Um, but when you take a step back and you remove the personal part of being a fan of a team and being a fan of certain players, like the Coyotes are full rebuild, like full yeah. rebuild. So like you, you, as much as you love these players, like you just can't get too invested into them because they're going to be gone. Like they're going to get traded when you're in this, in this position. And let's be honest, like the coyotes are probably what, like three years away from probably more like four or five, four or five years away from like really competing. Listen, and I know we may bring them up a little too much, but we both grew up around hockey teams who were bad. Yes. Were really, really Atrocious. bad. And obviously, the, the Avs just want to stand the cut. The Sabres are, are are the Sabres. But it, you, it takes a while, man. But this is what it's, this is what being a fan is. Like, you yeah. got it. This is what makes good fans. This is why, this is what makes good fans is, is pain. Yeah. This is why um, I hate Patriots fans, for example. <laughs> like, you can't be a real fan because you didn't have to stick to bad times. Yeah. You've only got good times. Yeah. Um, teams that just consistently wouldn't piss me off. It takes a while, but Oh my God! Does it feel so good when you get there? Yeah, it, like it feels so it's good. All so worth the pain. just, just you stick stay with the it, course. Coyotes fans. Stay and I know it. we don't need to preach to the choir. Like yeah. Coyotes fans are the most loyal <laughs> yes. fans in the NHL. They like really it are. is unbelievable. Like I, it makes me so mad when people talk down on the Coyotes because their fans are so incredible. Yeah, um, it's unbelievable. Laughing, saying Law Dog though, Mac. I love Lawson Kraus. Love Krauser. Um, it would suck to see him go as well. Um, I think it's like harder for me to want to get rid of players that like actively want to be here. Like Clayton yes. Keller wants to be here. That's Lawson why I'm so wants sad to see to Nick here. Bukestad leave. Like yeah. he was amazing. He was such a good guy. Yeah. Same with Troy Stasher. Yeah, they want to be here. So obviously losing Lawson Cross would suck because he's one of those guys that genuinely wants to be in mm-hmm. Arizona and wants to stick through this rebuild and help his team win. Um, but yeah, just like t- trying to take a step back and realizing like the Coyotes are a few years away from really competing, making a deep run into the playoffs, like trying to get that Stanley Cup to the Valley. So, um, you can't hold on to guys like Schmaltz and you just kind of have to like <sighs> take the heartbreak and just realize that it's going to be worth it someday because, um, the timelines just don't match and the Coyotes have to commit to the timeline. Like they are so far <laughs> down this road now yeah. that like they have to stay on course. Like they can't divert. They can't take a pit stop. They can't like go anywhere, but f- with the plan that GMBA has, G- G-M-B-A. G-M-B-A has li- like laid out for them. So I think it's just, it's tough. And it sucks and it's rocky and it's not fun, but like staying the course that they're on right now is the best way to go. So 100%. Um, Gabriel saying, I don't watch hockey, but I might have to start with all those great picks. Gabriel, listen hey, to me. Now is time. You got to watch hockey. It's honestly, I don't want to make anyone upset by saying this, but I think it's now my favorite sport in the whole world. So um, you got to watch hockey. It's so fun. It's honestly the best sport. It's, just electric and in get person. the mullet if you can because yeah, yeah in person it is i love baseball and i love going to baseball games but it, it is for different reasons like when it comes to viewing a sport live just watching what is happening on the field of play in front of you there is nothing like hockey it is amazing yeah it's so fun so gabriel do me a favor start watching hockey my guy you're gonna love it it is very fun 
All right. Any other final thoughts on the Coyotes in this trade deadline? Nope. We get to watch some terrible hockey now. We do, but yep. that is, that's like I said, it's part of the. It's all I part genuinely of the don't think the Coyotes know who's playing for them. <laughs> no, I, we, I, they literally like they, they might have to call somebody up. I don't know what they're going to do. They we called don't up them. four people from they Tucson did? Yeah. just now. Like, yeah, Craig just quote tweeted it. Oh. Just recently, I actually was just looking at it. There so you if go. you guys give me a second, I'll find it. Okay, um, but yeah, I mean it, it. The hockey you're going to see over the next twenty five or so games is not going to be pretty but just remember it's all it'll all be worth it when there's a parade coming down mill yeah sure four players well milos kellerman milos milos yes i'm gonna be craig here he's okay. very particular about the milos john sebastian dea yeah yeah Day. oh boy vladislav kolya <laughs> konik yep and michael kesserling yep Listening to Jacob try to pronounce hockey names. Hey, I only oh got one God. of those wrong. <laughs> Kolya Chonuk I don't like because um, I tweeted this out. It, I like just about two months ago r- figured out how to spell Gostaspare correctly every single time. <laughs> it's it's go oh stis be here. Yeah. Um, and it took me a second to get Chikrin eventually, but I got it eventually. I, I'd always, I'd always, well, I'd always do the, K, the C instead of the K in Chik, in Jacob. Um, but now I have to figure out how to spell Kolya Chonuk or whatever. You're going to have to learn how to spell a lot of names uh, in the future. Hopefully, with I have to learn team. how to spell Bedard. One yes. end or two ends. I'm not really sure, to be honest with you, but I, I got will Bedard learn. on lock. Yeah. I can see that in my dream. I see that in my dreams. Yeah, Bedard, I, Bedard, Bedard I got. I just, I just hate the name Connor. And I'm sorry, Ingi. I hate the name Connor because how am I supposed to know? And for the same reason, I hate both my first and middle name because names should be spelled one way. I shouldn't, I shouldn't have to guess how to spell your name. You must really hate the name Michaela then. Um, There's like eight different. Yeah, ways but to spell you it. spell it the right way. Oh, like you are how I would think to spell Michaela. Really? Yes. Stop. Are you for real? Yeah. That might be the nicest thing you've ever said to me. Really? Well, it's like <laughs> me. I spell my names right way. Eric is with a C, and Sean with a H A W N. That's true. I hate Sean S E A N. Yeah. That's not Sean. That's Seen. Yeah, I get it's Gaelic and it's where the name originated and whatever. It's literally seen. It is not. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, if you're watching the Coyotes tonight, you might need to take an OGs in order to get through the you game. You probably will. You will need you to will take an OGs. You definitely need to take an OGs to get through this game. It's going to be interesting, to say the least. Um, <laughs> <laughs> hey, you, if you need an excuse to take an OGs, what better excuse is there to watch this hockey game? Um, I recommend personally the orange creamsicle sativa yes. uh, gummy. I think that is the most elite. Um, I like the the happy balance because if you're like me, sometimes watching sports is like a physical experience. So you need yeah. the CBD to like the aches and pains and then also the, the THC high. Yeah, absolutely. Which if you didn't know, their happy balance strawberries and cream gummies are now available. Cannot recommend them enough. I think the flavor is my absolute favorite flavor. Orange creamsicle was my favorite for the longest time, but I think it's been dethroned by strawberries and cream. Um, and it's like, it's, it's happy balance. Like you can't be mad when you're on a happy balanced <laughs> OG's cheese gummy. They are the best scratch made THC gummies in the state of Arizona because they're made in Arizona. And what else could you ask for? Um, you can find them at your local dispensary by checking out ogsbrands.com. You must be 21 years or older to enjoy and if you're going out to the golf course this weekend, which, hey. I was just going to say, all these hockey players love golfing. And now think, of, think about getting traded to Arizona from, like, Calgary. Yeah. And now you get to live in Phoenix with all this golf. All of these guys, all the people, the prospects coming up are going to have something to do this weekend mm-hmm. when they're not playing. They're going to exactly. get to go golf at uh, Dobson Phoenix Ranch. Country Club. Dobson, Dobson Ranch. Ranch, especially the best Dobson Ranch, the best one out of all of them. And they can do it if they look really good and they go to badbirdie.com. Mm-hmm. Um, they have the best golf gear probably in the history of golf gear. They've got everything you need, polos, hats, women's gear, sweats, joggers, whatever you're looking for. Bad Birdie has it and it's really cool. Um, they just dropped six new polos, three new quarter zips and two new hats. And um, if you use promo code PHNXBB15, you will get 15% off your entire order at badbirdygolf.com. Um, I feel like we didn't we not mention the fact that Ghost is playing in Phoenix tonight? Well, we, yeah. oh, we did. We did. We yeah, did. That's yeah. right. I said he had to go into um, the locker room yeah, and go right. grab his bag. And um, <laughs> I want to see you laughing message. I want to try and pronounce those two names you got there. Me? No, I want to hear Mac try and pronounce those two names. Where? The, the second to top message. Okay. Right there. Nikita Nesterenko. Okay. And Andre Sister. I would. I think that was pretty good. I don't know. I just. I would have said Nikita <laughs> Nestor, Nestorenko and Andre Suster. Um, 
I don't know if we're right, though. I don't know. <laughs> Hockey names are a shot in the dark. You, know? you never know what you're going to get. Alphabet different. soup. Um, <laughs> thank you guys so much for tuning in to this episode of the Phoenix Sports Podcast. We hope you have a wonderful and safe weekend. Don't forget, we have our tea party coming up. We are going to be out at the Dobson Ranch Golf Course. We're renting out the entire driving range. We're going to be watching the Suns game. The last tea party was absolutely it electric. Was so fun. So much fun. You can get tickets to that event by checking the Discord. Our members only. Uh, tickets are in there and they're discounted. So if you want to sign up to be a diehard, there's so many good reasons why, but getting discounts on our events is one of them. You get a free shirt when you sign up to be a diehard, by the way. Also, yeah, sign up to be a diehard just seems like it makes fiscal sense. Yes. You sign up, you get a free t-shirt, you get discounts and stuff, and you get $50 from Mountain Mike's. 20% like, off the locker at all times. Like, come on, there's so many reasons why. fiscally responsible. It is. It is a good money move. Mm. Um, but get tickets to our tea party by checking out our social media at phnx underscore sports or phnx underscore sons. Um, um, and we hope to see you there. It's going to be really fun. I'll be there. Sean will be there. The whole PHNX fam Thanks. will be there. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Have a wonderful, safe weekend. And we'll see you next Friday at 1230. There's a snake in my boot. Bye. There's a snake in my boot.